The science of drones. Ooh, I hope they're gonna deliver me pizza. Oh, 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 Katie, what are you doing there? What, what's that? Oh, hi, Sally. I was just setting it up my drone. Uh, a drone? It kind of looks like a giant bug or a giant bird. That is a great observation, Sally. Now let's see this thing in action. help my drone to fly. Cool. Kind of looks like the wings of a bird or a bug. You are so right. Just like these wings help birds to fly up in the air, these propellers help my drone to lift into the air. Whoa, cool. You might have also noticed that Piper was controlling this using a remote controller. She made the drone go up, down, side to side, all with the click of buttons or joysticks. Whoa! So the drone is like a remote control car, but for the sky. <laughs> That's exactly right. Drones come in all shapes and sizes and can be used to do a lot of things. Let me tell you a bit more about drones, Sally. When a drone is in flight, there are multiple forces that are acting upon the drone. Forces are like pushes or pulls. There are four main forces of flight. Lift, thrust, drag, and weight. Let's build a hoop glider together in this next activity to further explore these forces. To make your hoop glider, cut the index card lengthwise to create three equally sized pieces that are roughly one inch by five inches. Take two of the strips together end to end then use the longer strip to make a large circle. Make sure to overlap the ends about half an inch so that they keep their rounded shape. Create a smaller circle using the last strip of paper, overlapping the edges like before. Tape the paper loops to the end of the straw with the straw inside the hoops. Try to avoid placing the straw where the loops are taped together. the straw in the middle with the hoops pointing upright and gently throw it with an upward angle. Wow, wasn't that cool? Now how do those four forces that I mentioned earlier work to help our glider fly? Well, the curved surfaces on the top of the glider help to generate an upward force called lift. This lift force is working against another force called weight or gravity that is pulling the glider down towards the ground. When we throw the glider with our arm, we are generating a forward force called thrust. And this thrust force is working against a force called drag, which is caused by the air around the glider. So weight, thrust, drag, and lift are the four forces that are acting on our hoop glider. These are the same forces that work on a drone when it's flying high in the sky. Now for something really cool. Some awesome high school students from Boston actually had the chance to experiment with designing, building, and testing drones of their very own. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Kelvin. I am a junior at Dearborn STEM Academy and I'm going to explain drones. This is a quadcopter because it has four rotors on each side of the drone. These orange and black spinner thingies are called props. And then the things around the props are called rear guards to protect the props from if they crash into a wall, tree, or wherever you are flying a drone. This drone can fly about 400 feet into the air. It also has about a 60 frame camera on it as well, so you'll be able to get like good videos and cinematic shots. Most drones will be able to fly about 400 feet in the air. So you can get like, very, very high and very, very like, good shots of you in your surrounding areas or wherever you're flying. This remote is for this drone specifically.
specifically, most drum remotes will look similar to this, but this here is the left stick and it will make the drum fly up, fly down, left and right. The right stick here will be able to move the drum about 360 degrees, left or right. Um, if you do this on the drum, it will like start it up, most drums have that default setting. Um, this button here is to make the drum hover. 15 feet in the air. This button is to make it land automatically wherever it is. Uh, this button specifically is when you press it, it will make the drone follow the remote itself, which is pretty cool. Wasn't that amazing? Thanks for showing us your awesome drone. Just like Sally observed, many drones look and act a lot like animals. Drones can hover in the air like hummingbirds, swoop around obstacles like a bat, and even fly backwards like a dragonfly. The engineers who design drones take a lot of their inspiration from nature. They study how birds, bats, and dragonflies, and even annoying houseflies can defy gravity and avoid obstacles, even at super high speeds. When scientists use ideas from nature to solve problems, it's called biomimicry. And in this activity, we're gonna use biomimicry to design our very own paper airplanes. It's best to do this activity with a friend or family member so you can brainstorm and compare ideas. So, Francesca. What's up, Kaylee? Hey! What are we doing today? We are going to make cool paper airplanes using biomimicry. Wait, paper airplanes are literally my favorite thing ever. Wait, wait, biomimicry? What, what's that? Well, as I was telling our young scientists here, biomimicry is the process of using ideas from nature, like plants or animals, to solve a problem or create something new. So today we're going to use biomimicry to design our very own paper airplanes. That sounds so cool. Oh, wait, count me in. What's the first step? First, we need to get some ideas from nature. We obviously want our airplanes to fly, so let's take a look at some things in nature that also fly. Uh, okay, I, I think I got a couple things. So, birds fly. Uh, and bees and bugs, dragonflies. Oh yeah, those all flies. Yeah. Awesome. So let's each choose one of these animals and use it as an inspiration for our paper airplane. So who did you choose? Originally, I wanted to do a ladybug because I love ladybugs, but it's kind of hard. So I chose the American crow. Love crows. Ooh. American crow actually has short bursts of really high speed, but they have to flap a lot often because you can see that their wingspan is a little bit shorter than some other birds, like maybe one we're about to see. And they have to flap hard and often, but initially they get a lot of speed. And that's what I like, a lot of speed at the beginning. What did you pick? I chose the laughing gull. So something really cool about this bird is that it has a really long wingspan. Um, and it uses that wingspan to ride what's called thermals. Thermals are when the sun hits the earth and makes a lot of heat and heat rises. So birds seek out the thermals and ride them so that they don't have to use as much energy or use a lot of calories or use a lot of effort to fly. They just rise up on a thermal and then coast around until they find another one. That's so cool. It really They're like is. the surfers of the sky. Oh, that's, that's awesome. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into what our paper airplanes look like. So for my paper airplane, you could see that it is much shorter here than Katie's. Katie has a nice, thin, long paper airplane, and that shows how she copied the laughing gull's structure, as the laughing gull is really thin and long, so it can glide along. Mine is pretty short and stout, 
just like my American Crow, and it's gonna have a big burst of energy right at the beginning. All right, should we go test these out? Let's test them. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you see that? Let's rewind for a second. As you can see, Katie's plane soared through the air longer than Francesca's. And that was because her design incorporated the long wingspan letting her glide through the air. Want to make your own paper airplane at home? Here is how we made ours. Here, use this video so that you can pause and make your own. has been brought to you by National Grid, who supports Science Club for Girls' mission in making STEM exciting and accessible to all. Both National Grid and Science Club for Girls support women in STEM and are working towards making STEM more diverse, equitable, and inclusive. Science Club for Girls Lie, let's all take one deep dive into the world of science, technology, engineering, and math. Get your safety goggles, cause we're making things explode. Science is so fun, so let's take it on the road. Meet a young scientist just like you, and learn all about what they do. We'll even learn science that's in the news, through one-on-one -on -one interviews, with SCFG Live and friends. Experimenting never ends. Now let's see what's in store. Just press play and get ready to explore. Ho, 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 hey, hey, hey. Ho, 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 hey, hey, hey. Science Club for Girls is a nonprofit organization that fosters excitement, confidence, and literacy in STEM for girls and young women from underrepresented communities with free experiential community-based programs. 
To help keep our programs free, please consider making a donation today. Learn more and donate at scienceclubforgirls.org.